Okay, hi everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is uh, a series of sessions today on uh, a website called middleschoolchemistry.com. And I'll, oh, and uh, I'll <laughs> put that up on the screen in a second here. Do you have a card on your table? So basically, uh, what it is, it's a website that we developed almost 10 years ago now um, to give middle school teachers uh, fully developed lesson plans in you know, the kinds of stuff you would teach in middle school that relates to chemistry. So uh, there's things like um, you know, evaporation and condensation, uh, the idea that uh, matter is made of uh, tiny particles that are in motion or attracted to each other. Uh, and you'll see as we go through some of the lessons. Now, the uh, sessions, we have um, four, and you're not, you know, you can come to one, two, three, four, any combination thereof. Nobody's obligated to be here all day, but um, we're going to do uh, the different chapters in middle school chemistry. Um, just to get an idea, are you guys middle school teachers or, yeah? Uh, like what grades, more or less? Seventh? Fifth through ninth, you busy? Mm -hmm. Eighth. Okay. Ninth? ninth? Oh, eighth, got it, sorry. Not a teacher. Not a teacher. Uh, and you are here because you're a curious guy, or you've got somebody who's going to bring you breakfast here, or what? What, <laughs> what? What's your, uh, why are you here, bud? All right, I came here because it was the um, most interesting and this time lost. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, it's good to have you here. Um, so we're going to work in either pairs or in uh, groups of three. So you guys uh, just find a partner or a little group to work with, and we'll get started. I guess. What would you like me to get out? Nothing yet. Okay, if you guys, um, it, I'm not saying go to the website now on a device that you have, but uh, when you do, or if you go to middleschoolchemistry.com, this is the main page you'll see, and the, I'm going to give you a very quick like, look at what's, uh, what's in the site, just to get you familiar with it. I usually get to the lessons by this big button here, view the lessons, but there's other ways too, like up here, lesson plans. But I usually hit view the lessons. Oh, before I do this, is there anybody who's used the site before? A anybody? No? OK. So oh, like I said, the uh, lesson plans, it's all free, uh, developed by my little office, the K-8 to science office at the American Chemical Society. And the, uh, it's got six chapters. And the first one is just a, sort of a general thing about matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, why is a solid a solid, or a liquid with a liquid, or a gas a gas? What is it about the particles, the attractions, and the motion which makes the states of matter what they are? Um, we don't go into state changes in lesson one. We save that for, I'm sorry, in chapter one. We do that in chapter two. But you'll see each one of these has like five or six different lessons. In chapter two, we talk about what, what happens to make something go from a, a liquid to a gas, let's say, or a liquid to a solid, or the other way around. So it's all about uh, state changes, evaporation, condensation, melting, and freezing. Um, whoops, chapter three is on density. We won't be looking at chapter three today. Uh, it's just, I don't know, uh, we're doing a combination of chapters one and two in the first session. And then in the second session, we're going on to another chapter. Uh, let's see. Chapter four is about the periodic table and bonding, which we won't be covering today either. But chapter five is about uh, the characteristics of the water molecule and why it's a good dissolver. And then six is chemical change. So just to give you an idea for the day, if anybody wants to come to another session or wants to decide, um, this morning, this first session is about chapters one and two. And then the session two, we jump all the way to the water molecule and dissolving. Session three is going to be about chemical change. 
and session four is going to be about one aspect of chemical change, which is um, this idea of ocean acidification, of CO2 getting into ocean water and making it more acidic. So it's sort of a, uh, a more environmental or issues-based or application of chemical change. Anybody have any questions about just the website in general? OK, so if we just jump in and you have questions or uh, if you want, oh, I should say that it would be great if you guys made suggestions or talked about how you do maybe similar activities in your class or how you could do it differently or add some math or anything like that. Yes. Sorry, quick question. No problem. So the activities and stuff, like, are they in the SMSLR? They are. Yeah, even though we produced this uh, almost 10 years ago, I think it came out in 2010, um, over the years as you know, the environment has changed, uh, the teaching environment with standards. We've always updated it, tried to, yeah, make changes so that uh, the lessons are aligned with the NGSS. And we've added lots of stuff over those 10 years. Uh, Don't you have a short video from each one of the units? That we do. Yeah, I'll show you. Um, it's actually in each lesson. Uh, like if we go to chapter one, lesson one, because that's what we're going to start with anyway. Molecules matter. I'm not sure how, uh, what internet I'm on right now, but I hope it works well. So we'll see. Oh, so let me show you. Um, when you go to a lesson, there, there's a little video in the very beginning, which is me. Uh, like there's 42 lessons, so you have to listen to me 42 times, which is bad. But uh, it's a. It's about usually five minutes highlighting the, the, what the activity is, um, you know, how you do it, what are the learning objectives. And uh, at the end, there's a little bit piece about how that lesson aligns with the NGSS. So, it, and this is not for students, this is just for you. And then there's basically the, uh, the big, long lesson plan itself, which is a, oriented or I guess written in the 5E style. You guys familiar with that? I'll just really quick. Um, it's a pretty common way of organizing a lesson. Uh, E's, the five E's that we use, uh, people use different E's, but the ones that we use are um, you first uh, engage, E and right? Engage. So it's a, a quick introductory activity or a little demo or a little talk with students. Uh, to get everybody on the same page so we know what we're going to explore in the lesson. So that's the engage part. And then there's explore. So in the engage, we come up with a question to investigate. And then the explore is to try to answer the question using an experiment. We usually try to get the kids involved in designing the experiment. And then there's, uh, let's see, explore. I'm sorry, yeah, engage, thank you. Explore, and then explain. So we want to try to, uh, we usually use like a molecular animation of some sort or pictures or some way to explain what the observations the kids had, um, what happened and why did it happen on the molecular level. Now we never get into sort of like a, a very quantitative explanation. We don't calculate moles of anything. It's more qualitative. Uh, why did this maybe molecule interact with that one. Um, so that's, let's see, engage, explore, explain. Then there's evaluate. And that's like, uh, we have a student activity sheet with each lesson. So the kids would be like answering questions or writing down their observations or making little drawings based on like a model drawing that you would, you know, maybe do for, uh, just to give them something to work from. And then there's uh, the last E, is extend. Uh, now, some people use a different 5e model, but that's ours. Uh, and the extend is usually, what could we do to um, see if kids really understand what this whole thing was about? Give them something, another context, or uh, another example, or a little related problem, and see if they really understood what was going on. So let's just start. Uh, I will. Let's do chapter one, lesson one. And we use pretty simple materials. We have a little bag of stuff here we can give you. Now, OK, we only have two groups, so 
I can take one if you want. And then I can use it. You guys, you can open up your bag of materials and take everything out. And it requires one other uh, piece of material here. That is a sheet of, woo, thank you. So the way we get started in uh, chapter one, lesson one, because it's the very first lesson, we start, the engage is a talk, really, with students about matter. So we can like, do that really, really fast if you want. Um, well, even if you don't want, we're going to do it really, really fast. Uh, like, like, give me an example of matter in this room. This is the conversation you might have with students. Anybody? Your chair. This chair right here? And so I'm going to just treat you like a student, OK? So why, why do you say this is matter? Hmm. So you must have been in class and, and learned that idea, right? OK, it takes up space. We, uh, another example of matter in here? <laughs> Very good. And I also take up space. Is there any other like sort of characteristic of matter that um, you know, they take up space? What else? You take up space. You have mass. You have mass. I matter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's very affirming. Uh, right. So what's another? This is a solid. And give me an example of another uh, state of matter. Anybody? Like the water. The water in there. Does that also, I mean, why, why is that matter? OK. And then, um, and then there's a gas, which you know, for younger kids, it's hard to imagine that it is actually something. But it also has mass, believe it or not, and takes up space. OK. So we're going to take a quick look at some matter and just see if we can understand some of its characteristics. So you guys, um, I think Kim gave you a little piece of wax paper. And what we're going to do is take some common matter. We'll use a liquid water. And could you guys just take a little bit of this and stick it in a cup? You don't need much at all. Maybe like a teaspoon or so. You can do this. And we're just going to observe this matter. Now, in middleschoolchemistry.com, uh, oh yeah, it's a dot com just because we didn't want anyone else to take the name and like make money off it. So it could have been .org or .whatever. But it's all free. Don't worry about it. Uh, you just go on and use it any way you want. Uh, in minimalchemistry.com, in the lesson itself, we have the, this thing on a backing, like card stock, or you could put it on an index card or something like that. But just for this event, I think with you guys, I, I felt OK just giving it out the way it is, kind of flimsy. So you'll see if it works for you. So take about, I think you should have a dropper in your materials. And put like maybe five drops of water together in the center to make one big drop of water on your wax paper. We're just going to quickly look at what water is like. OK, so just you guys, um, play with that. for or Before you play with it, actually, if you're doing this with students, you might ask for some observations already. Like, um, I don't know. We have such a small group here. We could get people's names. Um, what's your name? Kristen. 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 Well, what's an observation on that uh, on that matter sitting there on the wax paper? Well, as he was dropping it on the wax paper, it seemed like even if he tried the space to drop out a little bit, it still kind of formed together. Like <laughs> a cohesive droplet. Yeah, yeah. It seems to hold together pretty well. Any anything else about its shape or the look of it or? How about, what's your name? Patrick. Patrick, go ahead. Um, yeah, definitely it has like a kind of spherical shape. It looks like a, like it took a vitamin or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's got this dome thing happening. It's kind of neat. Any other observations about it? Thoughts? OK. Would it do the same thing if it was just on a different type of paper? Oh, um, good question. Good question. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a, like a teachable moment. You could. Uh, you know, go ahead and explore that. But we're not going to do that right now. But that's a good question. Um, you guys, how about this? If you carefully uh, move or tilt that piece of paper, does the drop come apart? Does it stay together? Um, I don't know. Well, any, 
what, what are your observations on that? It just stays together. Yeah, it stays together pretty well. So let's do this. Um, I think you should have a popsicle stick. See if you can use this to just separate that drop into two drops. And you can, um, Patrick, I'm not saying you're trying to dominate the activity, but anybody else can try it too. <laughs> And we're not going to spend a ton of time on this uh, because we started a little late anyway. But uh, you guys, easy or hard to separate? Hard. Not so easy. Yeah. Did you get it separated eventually or no? No. OK, sometimes you can use um, two uh, popsicle sticks and go in opposite directions. Or if you're really quick with one, you can do it. But just try that. See if you can get it to separate. And sawing it, sawing it doesn't help at all. Yeah. The nice and loud. Okay. The, the little sphere's getting smaller, and the more it's getting absorbed into the popsicle oh. sticks. So it's like decreasing. Yeah. <laughs> That's one downside <laughs> of the popsicle stick. It actually absorbs. OK, so you have to separate. Now, let's do this. Um, if you have two small drops, or two half drops, um, or a tiny fraction, so there's just two, uh, and you bring them together very slowly until they just touch. Let's see what happens. Yeah, just so they just barely touch. They're very close. Done. OK. So, uh, and you know, if I'm the teacher and you're the student, so what did you observe when you uh, brought them together? It's kind of like a magnet. Boom. All right. So, not to belabor this too much, but the idea right now in the lesson is to introduce the idea that the water is made up of tiny, tiny particles called water molecules. That even though you can't see them, there's actually extremely tiny little things in there that make water the way it is. So then, now that they've had an observation, you can ask questions to sort of elicit what water molecules are like, at least some of their qualities. Like, would you say, for instance, what's your name? Brandon. Brandon, would you say water molecules are attracted to each other, repelled by each other, or kind of neutral about each other? Generally, they're attracted to each other. Based on what we just did, um, what did you see that made you think that they're attracted to each other? Anything in particular? No, but I mean, based on what you just did, that, you know, with the popsicle stick or when you brought them together, what, what about these observations? It smells good. The surface smells good. Uh, yeah, you. Themselves together. Yeah, I mean, you're using the term melted, but you're, they attracted each other. I mean, they came together. It was hard to take it apart, yet when you brought them together, they were like super happy to get together, it seemed. So, water molecules are attracted to each other. So that's the very first part of the lesson, is this idea that stuff, matter, is made up of tiny particles and that they have certain characteristics. And in this case, water molecules are attracted to each other. But let's look at one other aspect of the water molecule. And we can do that. Uh, oh, I should have done this ahead of time. I need two cups. Hold on. No, just the, it's just a demo. Oh. And then if you put ice in one, I'll put hot water in the other. You know, make it pretty pretty full because I'm I'm going to put some water in that and just use ice. Uh, just use cold water. I usually have this prepared ahead of time. Bad me. Yep. Um, let's see. I need 
und Kopf. This is supposed to be cold enough. So we're just going to quickly look at another aspect of water. Um, you guys may have done this with your students at some point, where you're going to show, uh, you're going to try to show the difference between, or molecular motion, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, I'm going to do one other thing here. OK. So this is some uh, water. And we just saw that water molecules are attracted to each other. If you take some um, food coloring, and you stick it in some room temperature water, let's just see what happens. Blink. So I'll put, can you see that just fine, or does it need a white background? I'm going to give it a white background anyway. I'm going to try. How's that? Is that any better? OK. Well, what's happening in here, you guys? When I put the, um, the food coloring drop in, did it just sort of stay on top, sink to the bottom? I mean, what's going on? Any, I mean, what do you actually see? Is it Kristen? Yes. Kristen, what do you see? I mean, it kind of looks like it's trying to get to the point where it'll equally be dispersed in the water. Okay, but in general, it's, is it spreading out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you agree? I didn't get your name yet. Heather. Heather, okay. So here's a hard question, maybe. Um, here, for students, we would say, OK, um, this water is made up of water molecules. We agree. And the food coloring, let's just say, is made up of food coloring molecules. Why would this be happening? What, any thoughts about why the food coloring might be mixing in with the water? Is the water making it happen? Is the food coloring making it happen? I mean, what's going on? Heather, any thoughts? I think on the... I mean, the part, we just went through how the particles like to stick together. Exactly. Stick together. Right. So water molecules are attracted to each other. That doesn't explain this very well. There's another thing, there's something else going on um, that's making this happen. Thoughts, Patrick? It was like all the particles are still moving somewhat, so maybe the food particles or food coloring particles are moving just as much as the water would spread them out. Right. This is the other idea, the other main idea we want to get students to understand in chapter one, lesson one. Is, oh, actually, I think this is chapter one, lesson two, is um, molecules on the move. Or I could be confusing this after one. Uh, but the idea that not only are water molecules attracted to each other, but they're always moving. So really, believe it or not, these water molecules are z moving enough to hit into all those food coloring molecules and knock them all around and eventually spread them out throughout this whole thing. So water molecules have two, or well, molecules in general, have two big characteristics. They're attracted to each other and in motion. Um, so then we finally can get to a little animation that tries to show this. In middle school chemistry, in every chapter, there's a video or an animation that's on the molecular level. So it's kind of a, it's not super sophisticated, you'll see. So on this one, you start it, and there's an idealized uh, liquid there. And now we zoom in, and in chapter one, we show all molecules the same way, just as spheres. So uh, the idea is that they're attracted to each other. They're pretty close together. They're not like zooming apart. Um, but they're all in motion. 
And if you followed any one of them, you'd see it's all random. It just, they go anywhere. So if you could imagine putting a food coloring particles in there, let's say they're dark blue, you know, they're maybe like a little smaller, a little bigger. I guess they're bigger than water molecules. Um, they would get pushed all around randomly until you get what we saw. So that's basically chapter one, lesson one, is these ideas. Now there's more. Uh, let me uh, just shut this off for a second. If you go... So we explored, we explained, we showed an animation. The extend on this one is the kids play like a game where they drag water around on wax paper. It's kind of a fun game. So it's just an extend. So any questions about that lesson, chapter one, lesson one? Would you guys find that to be useful in any way? Uh, is, yeah. Yes, there is. Yeah, exactly. Ah, I made a mistake. Um, that's for the next lesson. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Yeah, but there's a reason. Oh, okay. So I just clicked on the second lesson. And we're going to hope that something happens here. Here we go. Let's try it again. Ah. So this one, we're going to take hot and cold water. Now, I hope they're still different enough. And put some food coloring in each one. I need a volunteer. OK. So we're going to put um, yellow and blue food coloring. In each one? Yeah, you put it in that one. I'll put it in this one at the same time. I know. One drop? One drop of each. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, well, I'll say one, two, three, go. Okay. okay. One, two, three, go. Ah, uh, come on. All right. It wasn't perfect, but it was de good enough. Wow. So. Hey, Kim, can you hold? I can do that. OK. <laughs> so there should be a pretty obvious difference. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, more questions, the better. Go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt, but I just had a quick question. Yeah. Is there any way, because my kids, I only normally have no more than 13 or 15 in a class. Right. Could I have them do this with a group? Absolutely. In I fact, Sure, that's the way it's written. Um, but I don't do it like that in the session just because we're usually hurrying to do stuff. Yeah, D definitely. I mean, if you feel safe with, uh, with hot water, sure. Um, yeah, and how bad are you going to get hurt if you use it, hot water from the tap? You know, you don't have to use something like that. It doesn't have to be that hot. And that's also mentioned in the lesson. We just use that because we're in a room without water. But, right? No, no, no problem. So anyway, let's just take a quick observation. Heather, mm -hmm. um, pretty obvious what's uh, the difference between the two? Yeah. OK. Um, guess which one was hot? The left one. Your left. Oh, I'm sorry, my left. Yeah. This no, one. I got it. This one over here, right. And why do you say that? Well, because if the particles okay. are probably moving faster and hot and it's spread out, all of that food dye. A lot quicker and more thoroughly. Right. So we just, this is um, the activity that students do in chapter one, lesson two, to sort of continue understanding more about matter, in this case, water molecules. We understood that they were attracted to each other and in motion. And here's another piece of the puzzle, is that if you heat them up, they move faster. You cool them down, they move more slowly. And just like you said, uh, this actually shows that pretty clearly. So the kids do that. And then you can show them Oh, where'd it go? Ah. Here's a uh, an animation that uh, tries to show the 
um, what's happening here on the molecular level. Uh, the site can't be reached. That's interesting. Oh, and there it is. Okay. So, if you, this one has a slider. The idea here is to show kids, well, it's obvious what we're trying to show, is that the cold water, the particles are moving slowly and are pretty close together. And if you heat them up, they, they move faster. And we tried to show that they get a little further apart. And I think that's pretty clear, right? Um, so those are, so what do we know so far? Uh, we know that uh, water molecules are attracted to each other in motion. If you heat them, they move faster and get a little further apart. If you cool them, they slow down. It looks like they get a little closer together. Let's um, do one more activity from chapter one, and that deals with thermometers. Uh, you guys can take two thermometers out of your little materials there. And all you need is a little hot water. Yeah, you don't need much. Patrick. Oh, Brandon. Oh, you need a broken thermometer? We have lots. Sorry about that. It probably happened in transit. So with this hot water, you guys, just take it and put a little in one empty cup. All you need is like that much, you know, enough to put a thermometer in. Did you get a new thermometer yet? No, here you go. Do you need ice as well? Yeah. Uh, you got it? Yeah, why don't you um, put the thermometer in, uh, you know, and be careful. You might want to take that thermometer out if it goes up really fast and really far. Yeah, We're just going to give you some, uh, a little bit of ice. And if you guys uh, just put some water in this ice, you'll have cold water. <laughs> That's the way that works. Thanks, Kim. So, you know, yeah, actually, you could take the uh, same one and put it in if you want. I think it'll be okay. You know, we could, um, I think the way it's written is that you would ask students to predict what will happen. And they're probably familiar with the thermometer enough to know what they're going to be seeing. Okay, so you guys, let's just take your thermometers out for a second, whether they're in hot or cold water. Um, the way the lesson is written is we would have looked at the thermometer first before we put it in and talked about what is it made out of? What is a thermometer anyway? Uh, it's what's in there, you guys? Any thoughts? Is it a solid, a liquid, a gas? The red stuff in the thermometer. Liquid. Yeah, it's a liquid. It's some kind of alcohol they use for these student thermometers. Um, So when you put it in hot water, what did you see happen? It went way up like crazy, right? Um, so this is, uh, and then you put it in cold water? OK, let's just talk for a second and see if we can use what we've learned so far to say why that happened. It's not about what temperature it reached. It's just about whether it moved up or down. So how about, what's your name? Beth. 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 Um, on the molecular level, uh, alcohol, that red alcohol, it's made up of alcohol. But alcohol is made out of what? It might have some water in it, it might. But it has, it's well, alcohol molecules, right? Um, and possibly some water too. I don't know what mixture they use for this. But um, so let's say those are alcohol molecules. And since it's a liquid to begin with, they're probably somewhat attracted to each other, right? And when you put it in hot water, based on what we know so far, what do the alcohol molecules do, do you think? Yeah, they move faster. Would you guess that they get further apart like water molecules do? You think? Yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do, basically, is ask kids to use what they've learned to explain this phenomena, the, why the red liquid rises. It's because the alcohol molecules are moving faster because we heated them. They get a little further apart. They got nowhere else to go. It's a very thin tube that they're in. 
and they go, oh, does that make sense? Kristen, yeah. Brandon, you okay with that? Yeah. It's a little harder to explain why they go down. Well, any thoughts about that? How about Heather? You put it in cold water and... Well, because the molecules are getting closer together and trying to keep them. Yeah. It, <laughs> I don't know about that, but they, they slow down and their attractions bring them closer together and they move down. The, 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 actually, the liquid becomes, like, just moves down the tube as the, as the molecules get closer together. So let's take a look at that real quick. This is chapter one, lesson three. I think, yeah. Now, I don't know why it's so slow, but the, um, I just clicked on the next lesson, the ups and downs of thermometers. Let's see what we get. Yeah, the added energy, yeah. In the, in, with the high, it makes sense that it would rise fast or quickly because they're moving on faster. But you would almost think that in the cold water that it would, it would could be slower to go down. Oh, yeah, you might think that. The particles are moving more slowly, and the attractions then can bring them uh, closer together. Uh, are, yeah, I, I don't know a good answer for that why the relative, um, why it goes down so fast. Uh, I guess because uh, the difference in uh, energy is so large that the effect is large. You know, they just bring them together quickly. Can you talk about even the pressure? No. No, because I, I, th I don't think that's an issue in the thermometer. Yeah. No, you know, here's what, uh, we usually say it like this. Like you have two competing, um, I guess, phenomena or uh, things happening. Um, one is motion and the other is attraction. So if you add an energy and you make the particles move faster, it's sort of harder for their attractions to act on them, right? Because they're moving past each other and stuff. So they tend to move further apart because their attractions are rendered... I don't know, less, you know, kind of effective. But, and then if you can slow them down, then their attractions can act on them more easily and bring them closer together. Um, that's, we always make that, in middle school chemistry, that sort of balance between motion and attraction. And that's what's happening in this thermometer. I know, I know my kids would definitely understand why it would be going up the thermometer. Right. Right, it's a great question. It's a little harder to understand. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Kim? If they ask that question, what might I do? Go back to animation okay. and show how at the lower temperatures the molecules are moving faster and it's going to be Yeah. And you know, that's tricky. What you just said, the attractive forces are stronger. They're not actually stronger. The attractive forces are the same all the time, but they can act on the particles more easily because the particles are moving more slowly. Okay. Kind of like how you can catch a slow <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Here's a, uh, a, like an animation to try to show this idea. <clears throat> I'm not sure how effective we were on this, but um, You've got the particles of alcohol here, and then we heat them up, and they move faster. They get a little further apart, and the red liquid rises. 
we can come back to room temperature again. We're, we just cooled them. They moved slower. We tried to show that they were closer together. And then if you make them cold, they're moving very slowly. Their attractions bring them close together. And they, don't, they don't, just don't take up as much room in the tube. Any questions about any of that, like how you can use a thermometer as a, a, a sort of example to help kids understand what you've done before? So we try to build you know, their understanding in this way. You guys, really quick, we only have eight minutes. So if we want to do one uh, very quick activity, we can. Uh, let's see. You need. Uh, those plastic bags, you should have two plastic bags. Mm -hmm. And if you get a little, I'll get you a little more hot water. And you also need your room temperature water. You don't have to use cold. So all you're going to do is these are zip closing quart size. They're not, uh, they're not freezer, they're storage. Sandwich bags don't work well. They often have a hole. Um, but so you're just going to pour some hot water into a reason you would do it carefully, you know, and if kids were doing it, you'd want them to be really careful. Um, again, you don't need water that's this hot. And you just want to put in, uh, you know, a bit. Can I do yours just to show? You're going to add hot water. That's easily enough. And then you're going to maybe, I do it like this, try to get some of the air out if you can. And then be sure you're well sealed. So we're just a little bag of hot water, and we're going to put it down on the, on the table. And now do the same thing, you guys, with room temperature water in the other bag. Then I'll come around with a little extra supply. Now, because we have so little time, I'm sort of zooming through this one. I'm going to go sort of backwards and talk about what you the engage on this one. Now that you're, oh, I should give you two of these. And you need one more. In the engage, for this is chapter two, lesson two, about evaporation. What the teacher does is he or she uh, moistens a, a brown paper towel or a coffee filter, anything brown that, you know, absorbent paper that looks, what's that? It won't deteriorate. Right, right. Brown paper towel is kind of a useful substance. So we ask kids, once you wet it and show it like this, just well, what's going to happen by the end of class, do you think, to this paper towel if I hang it up? You think it'll dry out? What? Why? What makes you say that? <laughs> I mean, have you ever? What's an example of that? Like that you've seen in your life? Yeah. Now I don't know if anybody still does that, but um, we do. Uh, if you hang wet clothes up, they dry, right? Um, and that process is called you said it, Beth. Evaporation. Evaporation. So obviously, I'm treating you like a student. Um, but that's, you want them to eventually say evaporation. And it depends on the level of the students. They may not know that. But if they don't, we're going to eventually tell them. Uh, that process where something dries up, seemingly like on its own, is called evaporation. So we're going to investigate that a little. You guys, how do you make evaporation happen faster? Well, and why do you say that? Well, what makes you think that? Do you have an example from your from everyday life where that you've seen that where something evaporates faster? Like exactly what she just said, clothes in a dryer. If you put clothes in a dryer, well, you're doing other things to them too. You're spinning them and all that, but you're adding heat to them, and you think they would dry faster than if you just had a dryer that spun them without heat. Yeah. Okay. Another, another example would be water cooled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
and you know puddles seem to dry up faster when it's hot out. There's lots of examples you could come up with for heat increases the rate of evaporation. But the idea is we want to do a science experiment to see if that's really true. So the, what we came up with was um, we would ask students, like, how can we do this? Like, if, if we were going to take, a, let's say, a drop of water and put it on two surfaces like this, what could we do with these so that we could test to see if heat increases the rate of evaporation? Okay, put one in sunlight and do what with the other? Bring it in the shade. Yeah. Um, now, on that one, you are, there's a little variable there in that you're exposing one to more heat and one to less heat, which is good, but you're also exposing one to light and not light. We just want heat. Just want to heat one and not heat the other without doing anything else. And then just wait for them. Like, yeah, instead of like a bag where you put a drop of really hot water and then really cold water, do you want to like have another way of manipulating temperature? Oh. Like in a bag and then see what happens over time. Oh, in a bag or in a bag? Um, inside, like on the towel. Ah, so you'd put one, a drop of water on each one of these? Of oh, different temperatures. Of different temperature water. Ah. It's possible. I, okay. Yeah, you know, it, this is a tricky thing. Um, the setup that's best, I think, is if you can put them in the exact same situation. Like, let's say if you have a, um, what are they called? Like a hot plate. And, and you have a, another hot plate. You turn one on, you don't turn the other one on. You put a little bit of water on each one and see what happens. Like, then they're exposed to, everything else is the same. So we tried to replicate that. So you guys, you created a, uh, a little hot plate in a sense, uh, a hot water bag and a room temp. So if you could just do this, it's the last thing we'll do, then you, we can go. Um, if you put one drop of water on each one of these, but let's do it when it's not on the bag yet. If you put these on the table, because we don't want to influence this test at all, we're going to do everything the same, just one drop of water on this one, one drop of water on that one in the center of each one, then take them and expose one to heat and one to it's not cold, but it's room temp. And let's see, just see if we have a difference. And you should put your water drops on at the same time. Oh. And to be super fair. So, I, guess, out of curiosity, why do you use one room temp and not cold? Um, because we, I think we did it uh, for relative difference. Okay. Um, if one is uh, hot and one is room temp, we'll see if there's a difference. Now, that's a great question. Um, we didn't have to do it that way. Sure. Could you right. add a bag? Sure. And still keep the room temperature Yeah, and that would be a very interesting test because it depends how you heat your water, but you're going to have a bigger temperature difference between hot water and room temp than you will between room temp and cold. So the kids might think there, there should be evenly, mm -hmm. you know, the results should be like uh, evaporate fast, evaporate middle, evaporate least. Uh, the cold in the room temp might be similar. It, it depends. You could try it. Okay. Like do the hot in the room and then in the cold in the room separately? Okay. Or do you think it, that could be an extension to make it predictions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sure. I mean, absolutely. You know, none of this stuff we expect you guys to use it, you know, verbatim or literally or implement it exactly as it's written. It's all based on your experience and what you might want to try, but it's a basis for doing, you know, different things. So we might not have enough time in here. Uh, this usually goes pretty quick, but let me just show you in, is it okay, Kim, if I take up another four minutes or no? You don't have to, you have to try to answer. Oh, I do? No, no, the next seven seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you guys okay if we just stay till nine? It's another four minutes. Just, I just want to show you what we do in Chapter 2, Lesson 2, which is called Evaporation. Um, sort of during this, like, maybe five-minute period when the, we hope to get some results here.
we show, we finally introduce like a water molecule in the classic way people are used to seeing it. Let's see if this. Uh, So we can't expect students to just watch those, uh, you know, evaporate. So we sort of uh, do this quick little mini lesson here. <coughs> Whoops. Oh, yeah, we have a, a pretty slow uh, thing happening here as far as internet goes. Normally, this just Rolls. Um, we tried to show kids what's this. Uh, every kid knows H2O. I mean, not every, but most kids have heard of H2O. And like, what is that? Uh, what does a water molecule, a model of a water molecule look like? Why did we show it the way we do? So I know you guys know this, but um, if you were using, if you were doing this with students, you would say H, you know, two. Oh, what what is that two about? And you'd want kids to say that means there's two H's, whatever they are. And maybe you would introduce that, those H means hydrogen. So we would get to the idea of a water molecule. And then we've been talking about uh, water molecules being attracted to each other. So we have this, I keep leaving the cursor there. Um, this is an animation of a, the view of a water molecule here, or the model, is called a space filling model. And the idea is they're very close together because they're attracted to each other, but they're in motion. I'm going to see if I can show one more. Oh, this is, uh, I forgot, uh, this is a gas. When we evaporate the water, or when water evaporates, the water molecules themselves don't break apart, like the hydrogens don't come off the oxygen. It's just each water molecule moves off on its own, <clears throat> and they float around in the air. So by that time, after you've done this little itty bitty, you know, like three minute lesson, you should have some results. Patrick, see you later. Thank you, Matt. Oh, no. OK, great. Well, thanks for coming. So can I just ask, uh, Kristen, did you have? I worked with Patrick. Oh, OK. You put more than one drop, for sure. <laughs> um, what, can you just say what you, your results, Heather? Um, our results are that the napkin that had the one drop that went on the hot Ziploc bag evaporated, and the one on the room temperature one did not. Or maybe the, that one maybe did, but not as fast as that one. I mean, that's just, it's hard to tell. Some may have come off, but not as much. Well, why do you think that is, Heather? Why would putting the water on the hot bag increase the rate of evaporation? What? Because it heated it up. It heated up the water molecules. What do you think? Did they move faster or slower when they were heated up? Yeah, and actually they move fast enough to what? To actually break away from the other water molecules and from the paper itself and go into the air. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And we have a, uh, an animation to show this idea. And this will be the last thing I show you guys. Where is it? Ah. Basically, what this is going to show when it comes up is the, it's a, basically uh, an animation of the experiment we just did. It will show a hot bag and a cold bag. So the hot bag is on the left, and there's, the particles are moving very fast, and they're evaporating, or they're leaving the surface, like you said. Um, and on the cold one, Maybe they're a little too much hot here. Come on. And look how when they're moving more slowly. You have some evaporation, but it's at a slower rate. 
So these are just big ideas that uh, kids should have in middle school, we believe, uh, presented in a way that is pretty accessible, um, easy stuff to use, and if you make the connection on the molecular level, maybe they'll start to, you know, maybe this kind of stuff will begin to make sense to them in the molecular world. Yes. That's a great question. Um, we wouldn't make that claim. I, I think we would just say that their, their motion is enough, and the ones right at the surface, if they get enough energy, they're just going to break away from the, uh, from the other water molecules that they were attached to. Now, your question's a good one. There actually is condensation happening at the same time, but uh, at a much lower rate. Um, just the air doesn't have that many water molecules in it. I mean, compared, there's a lot more water molecules to begin with here, and when they leave... Um, I would... Right, because they, they, they should be so happy they should be so happy where they are. Um, yeah, well, they're going to leave because they have way more energy because uh, we, we've added energy to them. No, the, the answer is because uh, the temperature of that hot water is enough that we've added enough energy to them to give them enough motion that they overcome their attractions and the ambient air is not nearly Really? That is, that is true. That's right. <laughs> no, but they're great questions. You know, all those questions are, are very, that's what a kid's going to ask. It's, yeah.